Hi everybody, this is John Lamesney. I am uh, looking back at 365 sketches on Facebook and I realized that uh, I asked a while back if friends and followers would send me phrases to illustrate and uh, one of the friends of our family, her name is Paula, uh, she sent in the phrase it's all fun until someone loses an eye. And of course We've all heard the phrase, I thought it would be fun to play with the idea of uh, dropping the letter I. And so I imagine this text sort of standing up straight and uh, the letter I, which appears in the phrase, would fall through the gate. Great. So the first thing I need to do is bring in an image that I um, have gotten from morgue file of a sewer grate. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. It asked me whether I want to embed or link it. I'm going to link it because I'm only going to use it for a very short time. It's a rather large image, so it might take a minute or two for it to come in. There it is. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and size this down with control. And by holding down control, of course, I uh, get to keep the um, constraints, constraints of the image. And um, I'm just wondering if there is a way for me to reduce all of the uh, data that's in that huge image. Let me just see. I'm going to delete that. I think I might have a smaller version of that image. We'll go to thumbnails and scroll down. Well, let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that image because it's so large it makes it unwieldy to work with. Um, so I'm going to go into my downloads folder. I'm going to right click on this image, which is currently uh, almost 4,000 pixels wide. I'm going to open it up in a free application called XNView. And XNView is a really quick, simple editor that allows me to do things like um, resize very easily. So if I go to image and go to resize, and I take this down to, let's say, uh, 600 pixels, and say OK. And I say File Save. It asks me if I want to overwrite it. I'll say yes, and close this, and close this. And I'll go back into my image. I hit 5 on my keyboard in order to see the whole frame here. I'm going to import that image now, which has been resized down. I'm going to link it rather than embed it. And I'm just going to move it in place on my uh, Inkscape canvas. And there it is. So I'm going to now go into the path menu and do a trace bitmap. And what that will allow me to do is to convert this to a vector, a path. And I'm going to say brightness cutoff and do an update. Normally you would see a preview here for some reason on this version of uh, Windows XP that I haven't installed, that, that I have installed. It, it doesn't do a preview. But um, I have a pretty good feel for it, so I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to close this now. And here is my vector path. I 
have all I need from that photo. So I'm going to delete that and then just move my vector based image back in place. Right there. The other thing that I want to do is I want to clean up everything above the uh, grate. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using the node tool. You can see now there's 6,800 and something nodes. And I really don't need most of them. So I'm going to select all these up here with the node tool. And once they're selected, I can easily delete them. Hit delete on my keyboard. And I'll do the same thing with this group of nodes here. Don't really need them. So I select them. They're highlighted. I hit delete on my keyboard and they're gone. You might get this weird curvy thing going on. Don't worry too much about it. You can always affect it with the node tool. Select these nodes here. Delete them. Select these nodes here. There's a few straggly nodes. And if I click away, it gives me a preview of what it looks like. And I feel like I can get rid of this nonsense here. So I select it again. And I'm just going to do a selection from basically one side of the uh, sidewalk to the other. And I'm just going to straighten out this line. Do that by grabbing onto these handles. I'm going to scroll back down and click away, see what the rest of the image looks like. And um, I am going to show the eye sort of below this area here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some of these nodes. And delete those two. I really just want the grate. So selecting nodes, getting rid of them. Selecting nodes, getting rid of them. And my my main objective is to still have it look like a sewer grate when I'm done. go. Select this individual node and get rid of it. Select this individual node, get rid of it. Grab these nodes over here, get rid of those. I don't worry too much about the straggling. Grab these nodes here, get rid of those. Grab these nodes here. Incidentally, if you are using an older version of Inkscape, if you're using like 047, for example, uh, you should know that one of the best improvements in uh, 048 is the node tool. And they're actually up to 0481. So if you are using an older version of Inkscape, um, this becomes a lot more <laughs> a lot more difficult. So I would highly recommend that um, if you saw my talk and went and downloaded Inkscape at the time, my talk somewhere and went and downloaded Inkscape at the time and haven't really touched it since um, that you go get the latest version and install it. Okay. All right. So here it is. This is the grate that we were talking about. And now I'm going to type in a piece of text that says, um, <laughs> going to 
control resize this down. You see that I left this eye out because the eye is going to be down below. Matter of fact, I think that I am going to uh, put a return carriage in there. I'm going to size this up. I'm going to use the text dialog in order to do a preview of what font that I want to use because that's just the default font, um, which is fine, but it's not necessarily um, what I want for this. I really want something rather compressed. I want a rather simple font too, something that does not have a lot of unnecessary curvature. Matter of fact, I have a good idea of what it is that I want. It's not bad. Yeah, it might be that one right there. I spend a lot of time in this dialogue just looking through fonts. Um, but unless you have just the right font, you can make or break a design. You don't want to use something that is too... Um, you don't want to use something that is too... obvious. That's actually quite beautiful right there. Um, that's what I want right there. So there it is. I'm going to size it up a bit. I'm going to take this shape and move it down. Size this up quite a bit. I am going to double click here and use my alt button so that I can kern the bottom line. By using the alt button and using the arrow button I can move this line of text up or down and then uh, quickly resize it. I wanted it to be rather tight. I'll use an ampersand here. Again, I'm going to fix what I just did. Um, by kerning again, sizing up. And um, Now, what I want to do is I want to affect the um, angle of this. So I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to first make that text into a path so that it's no longer editable as text and so that I can manipulate it. And you see now I have a group of 38 objects. 
I want to ungroup those so that I have individual letters. And then I want to uh, path union, or actually combine. And now that's a single path with 736 nodes. I can then use the path effect editor. And I can add a particular um, effect to it. So I'm going to use the bend effect. I'm going to say add. And then I'm going to take my node that I opened up by clicking on this uh, edit on canvas uh, tool. And I'm going to move this down. And I'm also going to skew the text a bit. And finally, I'm going to add an eye down here. And I'm going to set the font to the same font. Which was... And this is why you pay attention to the fonts that you use. <laughs> there it was. Quick type two condensed. So I will apply that and close it. And I'm also going to uh, path object to path. Select it again. And ungroup it. which point I can skew it to match the text up above. I'm going to size it up a bit to make it a little bit more obvious. I'm going to drop a line here so that I can make sure to align it properly. I'm also going to uh, hit 5 on my keyboard to make sure that I'm looking at everything I want to. And I think that's kind of fun. So uh, I want to make a color up here that's sort of like a um, sidewalk more gray than that for sure. And I'm going to path object to path so that I can take this and move it down and move it down and move it up and move it oops, move it up. And then I can take that shape and move it to the back. 
and I'm going to do the same thing down here and create a street. I'm going to use a darker gray, maybe something like asphalt. Yeah. And path, object to path. Using my node tool, I'm going to put this underneath. so send it to the bottom and finally I'm going to use the gradient tool in order to go from whoops from diff want to make sure that the gradient tool is set to uh, a linear gradient set to the fill and I actually need that to be quite lighter so something like this, no. something like this, I'll make this more of a, maybe a yellow. So doing some experimentation here, go back to my gradient tool, yeah, I think this needs to be a little bit more tan, more sandy. I'm going to do a gradient on this too, from solid to translucent. And there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this sketch. Thank you very much, Paula, for this suggestion. Um, <laughs> it probably is not what you were looking for, but that's part of the fun of it. And um, thanks as always for your support and your ideas. Have a great night.